Hey y'all, it's Sarah, and let's talk about what kind of panty mess I'm playing with today. You can see I've got some big fake logs in front of me. This is for my kid's Halloween costume. Don't ask, this is a thing of his imagination. And these things actually are cut to work like arms. You can see. So I kind of wanted to show what I did to get this look. I'm sure there's all kinds of videos for this, but this is the direction I went. I'm actually going to cut more of these down to use for my trees this year um, to kind of bulk them up. This that I'm using is cardboard. It is pressed cardboard that you would find in giant 10 foot rolls that they use for carpet. Uh, my husband cut them down for me and I have two more waiting to get cut down. But I had a scrap left and it's this stuff and I'm going to imagine I intend to try as soon as I start getting some things wrapped this year that you could probably do this on the um, wrapping paper rolls, the slightly thicker ones so you can get some variation in sizes, things like that. I'm going to try. I don't see a reason why it wouldn't work. So let's talk about getting this thing done. It's very simple. It's no big deal, but I wanted to throw an extra idea or two in um, that you might not think of while you're trying to whip one of these together. And it's kind of Dollar Tree oriented. So if you're a Dollar Tree person and usually have things stashed around your house, you probably can knock this out just pulling from your craft stash. So I've already been playing in this, obviously, to do his costume part. I still had supplies out. I wanted to dive in this it's going to be a little disorganized, please forgive me, but right now at this stage, you're going to need some hot glue, and I'm using just the super cheap Dollar Tree hot glue, and it didn't take quite as much as I really thought it would, to be honest, um, at least for something this size, and I don't know how big around that is, but this one's a pretty big one, and I am using these right here. Now, in the one I showed previously, that was actually toilet plunger handles so that he could hold those and walk with them. It, it's hard to explain, but I'm going to show you how to add um, some knot holes and a little more realism to this. So first things first, find your tube, whatever you're using. I've already, I've already glued a little bit of it. Um, I'm going to show you what pattern I kind of use, but I already did it just so it wouldn't roll around on me. It had time to dry and it wouldn't roll around on me as much as we're going. I've got my glue gun geared up. I'm gonna pull some of these out right here. Grab some craft supplies, hang out with me. This is a late night craft for me now that I've finished those other things. I am going to find some little stubby ones, I think, and kind of determine where I want them. I could also come in if you notice, some of the bags have real short stubby ones and some of them have longer ones. So I'm going to dive into a little of both. Let's play around with this. I know there's, I've seen people do pull noodle stuff and what have you. I just wanted to make mine extra with the actual sticks and wood pieces and all that kind of fun detail. So I feel one like this has got a pretty good space to get it to glue down. I'm going to go ahead and at least pop a little glue on there to kind of hold it in whatever place. I'll just go ahead and stick it right in there. I really probably should have sanded down my ends on this one where it was cut. I'm not. I'm going to use hot glue and kind of make it look a little barky there at the end. And I'm not sure that word is correct, but I said it. You understood it. We know what we're talking about. I'm going to throw another one over here somewhere while I'm gluing these down. This is where it gets fun. You don't have to have a steady hand. I'm going to start. Now... When we did the big ones, my husband did one with a hot glue gun while I did the other one. So his pattern's a little different. I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of liked my pattern better. His was a little more on the spooky Halloween side because he drug his lines 
kind of all the way downwards and mine had a little more not super thought put into the pattern but a little bit more I did sections and kind of swung around if you've seen me do faux wood and other things I kind of swung around in that little swirl maybe come up come down I'm doing it on its side so that they don't drip as much because I felt like the areas where there were was a little more drippy um, it kind of reminded me of candle wax as I was painting it so I don't know I'm doing it this way I'm giving it a little bit of breaking there with these kind of circular fake wood patterns this edge I'm gonna try to come in and get some of my glue to build up there I told you it was gonna go through a lot of glue that's where we're building up. I have done something similar. This is the first time I've ever done it quite this way. I've done some things similar, but I had a lot of fun with this and I thought this would be really, really great um, once my son's done with it to cut these down to use as trunks. They are not sp spectacular, but at a glance, you certainly would mistake them for real wood. Um, and I thought this would be a fun way to kind of bump up some of my smaller artificial Christmas trees. Just set them down in, possibly fill it with um, a little bit of concrete to weight it down. And I'm looking forward to trying that. Some of my little trees just look really stunted because we have such tall walls and ceilings. So you can see what I'm doing, just going through I have an unsteady hand. I don't know if you can see as I squeeze, I tend to be real shaky. The, if you are a shaky person, this is actually a perfect one for us. We can feel super confident. The shakier and more uneven this is, the better your results are going to be. So I'm going to come around my little stumps and kind of fill them in a little bit I don't know what is Dollar Tree they call them wood stems so these are their wood stems but I'm gonna go ahead and cover those and I'm just gonna finish this out doing the same thing kind of getting this build up on the edge to look like a um, some uneven raw edge of bark I try to keep it from doing the little drippy thing when you get done there's probably going to be a lot of strings especially if you're using the cheaper hot glue type material there's going to be a lot of strings now because the ones i was doing was for a creepy halloween costume i didn't necessarily sweat it as much but i'm going to show you you can kind of come in with just one of the dollar tree sanding blocks or your blow dryer or heat gun any of those methods to knock a lot of the strings off I have a little small broom with super stiff bristles that I tend to use to catch most of them on this one in particular I didn't want to use my heat gun I didn't want to take a chance of a lot of these getting that drip look so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and we'll be back I have given this thing plenty of time to dry so that I don't burn my fingers. I've got just a Dollar Tree sanding block. I believe this one is the fine medium grit. And you can see I added one more little stick, one of the small ones. You could not add those. You could add as many as you want. But the cool thing about it is that they kind of work like a kickstand, so these don't go rolling on me if I decide that I want to stack them somewhere. So this right here is doing kind of a two-fold thing. For one, it's helping me get all the stringies off because I definitely had a few. But it's also kind of dulling down the surface of that hot glue so it takes um, your... Oops. I got a little too rough. Let's try not to do that. Um, that it takes the paint a little better. 
it takes the shine off so you don't have to coat it quite as much so there we go okay i don't feel any strings this is what i did next and like i said there's probably lots of ways to do this but this is what worked for me i've got some waverly antique and i pretty much just pulled out a lot of brown i just pulled out a lot of colors um, and started playing with them but i've got this one and i watered it down and i did that for a couple of reasons it's going to soak into this because it's cardboard because it's paper it's going to kind of soak into it in different ways so i went ahead and watered mine down to allow it to kind of soak in in different colors and you'll see what i mean this is about kind of how watery and soupy i have that and if you've seen any of my other paint videos i love these for painting that's what i'm using i'm just recycling the one i had now one thing that i did want to point out is that i am not going to try to cover um this as i go i will try to work around it just to leave its uh real wood look And if you've seen me do other wood stuff, you know, this is kind of the basis other than the fact that I was able to water this down some. And you can see it's going to soak in slightly different in different areas. My sponge kind of is saturated in different places. So I'll get a lot of different color just doing this, just changing my pressure. You can start to see my glue pattern. Um, I went with almost, think about your fingerprint swirls i went kind of that direction and you can see this watery paint just does really really well if you've got um maybe the thinner ones like a wrapping paper one or something like that the type of tube that you're using i would suggest being a little easier on the saturating um or at least just be easier and while you're turning it until it gets dried again. But you can kind of see how that already offers um, kind of an interesting look. This would be passable for just throwing out in the yard like Halloween kind of decor. This would certainly be um, passable enough, I think. At a glance, I feel like it. This one's going to have some chatter in it, guys, because I don't want to miss. Part of the learning how to paint, I think, for a lot of people, is learning how. Um, and if I fast forward through that, I don't know that you're going to learn things that you would necessarily learn um, color-wise. About thinking about color. So, I'm bringing out um, my big messy paint palette you can see I've been playing with a lot of colors and just a black it doesn't matter what kind of black I'm gonna allow a little bit of dry time here first and I'm gonna go ahead and get my paints all prepped you really don't need a lot if you're just doing something this size this is probably about I know it's hard to tell but this one's about two foot long um so you don't really need a lot of paint. I just did really large pieces earlier. So pick out some browns. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to tell you that I used a burnt umber brown. You could also, if you've got your chalk paint, um, if you're a Waverly person, you could probably use truffle. But you can see there's, this is my antique. Um, still kind of sitting there. This is chocolate brown brown i believe and this one is a burnt umber color so i just picked a couple of browns really you just want to get color combinations um and you can see and natural wood exteriors or bark you've got all kinds of colors that go into one little piece you can see um this right here already is starting to look very similar to what's in front of us at a small scale so we're just going to look for something in your brown tones, a little bit of black, and I'm also going to bring in some white. It's a good time to grab baking soda if you want some more texture to this. I used it in mine to add a little bit more texture to tone down some of the hot glue. 
um, and almost give it the texture of the fungus that grows on the bark surface, that kind of thing. So I brought that in to some of my paints as well. Now is a good time to not feel bad about brushes that you've let get a little on the scroungy side. I'm going to use this one because it's just smaller. Um, I did use the other ones to do the bigger pieces, but I'm just going to use this guy. So I tapped it into some of the black. And I think I went a little overboard. So I'm going to grab a paper towel and kind of dab that off a little. And at random, I wanted to make sure that it's getting down to my cardboard in some spots. So I'm pushing a little hard. You can kind of see this brush is, has definitely seen better days. There is no rhyme or reason to any of this. And we're going to end up lay, layering over this again. But I do want some spots that have a little bit extra depth, a little bit of um, darker places. And I'm spinning my brush around just to make sure that there's no um, specific pattern showing up. And I'm just going to move around this thing and um, kind of dab this in. And then I'm going to take one of the other brushes and kind of brush it in a little bit as well in some spots while it's still kind of damp. So before I get too far on the back, I did this in sections. It just made it easier um, to give it time to dry. But I'm just going to take one of these and I'm dragging it down a little. If there's any spots that still have some wet paint, I'm dragging it down a little. And whatever's left sitting here on this bristle brush I'll just kind of sweep across sweep over my glue spots I'm just making sure it has a lot of texture to take away from the idea that it is this plasticky hot glue it looks like I should have sanded those ends a little better but I can always hit it later so you can kind of see it's already got a little depth showing up. Really push that brush in there. Now the cool thing is, as you look, there's already basically three color tones showing up in here. The original cardboard color, um, actually more than that really, the tones that the antiquing wax made, and then now we're adding these darker tones. I want to make sure I've got them a little everywhere. I still came back in and added some spots where I just kind of wanted to balance it out. But you can kind of see this is where um, I splotched it in at this stage. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to another series of colors. I'm going to start adding in. This is what my little palette looks like right now. So this is some of the burnt umber. Like I said, use just whatever varying browns that you have. And if you don't like the ones you have, mix some up. I'm throwing a little of the antique in there. I'm going to pop in a few of these kind of redder brown tones here and there. If your brush wasn't beat up before you got started, it's going to. I just liked the texture this particular one um, was throwing out for me. You could probably use a stippling brush to do this. I don't know about... I think the texture of a sea sponge would be good, but I think you would have to push too hard into it to really get it down to some of that cardboard area like the brushes do. 
knowing your tools sometimes helps. That's why I don't like to leave anything out because I have learned that certain ones allow me certain benefits that I can't necessarily achieve using anything else. And I imagine real artists probably could with anything stuck in front of them. But sometimes once I get used to using a tool and understanding kind of its properties, I guess. You can see I'm getting that, that reddish brown up in there. Check it out. We've already started looking like some wood. If you want to, you can swish some of that through. So there is a stage right there. You could stop here and you still get a fairly, um, a fairly believable something or other here, uh, especially if it's thrown in your fireplace behind the screen. You could always do some little cutouts on here to um, put artificial lights. We don't use our fireplace. We have a real wood burning fireplace, but we don't ever use it. So I always find ways to make it look like a working fireplace and give the illusion. This is a pretty good way to do it. So a lot of tones there. You can see I really just kind of dipped into a little bit of everything and made sure that you could see a little of those color tones all over. So you could stop here and you've got a fairly decent wood like something. I'm going to take mine further and put this aside bring out my little concoction here. This is what I've been mixing my mess on. You can see I just added a little bit of white chalk paint and you can tell what I've been playing with is no longer really even super white. It almost looks like concrete. It's had some time to dry, but it's not hard yet. So I'm just going to mush into it because that's just more texture for me. I threw in some baking soda. I have no ratio for you guys. I just did it until it looked like it might stick, so I added it. Try not to sweat these things too hard. I think the more I panic about getting something right, the more prone to mistakes I make. So at this stage, there is some white to this. If you want more gray tones, you can always throw a little black. I have some over here. I could make this a little grayer. And you can see it naturally kind of did that on its own. I think I got that a little more pasty than... So, there we go. It's got some texture to it. It's got some pigment to it, which is what we want. And it's got some texture to it. Close enough for me. I'm going to go back in with my little sad brush here. Uh, this is a perfect opportunity as well to use one of the chip brushes. I could very well dip in there, but I'm just going to dip in. Some of this texture is going to stick. Some of it's not. It's going to look like um, kind of the white fungus stuff that you see on bark. You could also do this with some uh, green colors too if you wanted to add a little bit different type of fungus so I don't want to start too heavy I can always add more in some certain spots and don't worry some of the texture is still sticking there and it's gonna make it powdery and it's really gonna add to that um, Kind of that thought that something's growing on it that I guess that's something growing on it. Could be part of the bark. Not really a plant person. I just know how to look at them and kind of guess from there. So no rhyme or reason to this either. If you've got some super shiny spots of maybe your hot glue or anything like that. This is a good opportunity to kind of hide some of those down. 
if you wait in between layers long enough, and I'm kind of showing some of that, if you wait, all of these colors show up at once. If you move the paints too quickly while they're all still wet, they'll start to blend and you're going to get one solid kind of gray color. And I went ahead and did that there. I don't know if you can tell, but it's kind of got this ashy gray to it, which is just another color um, to be throwing in here. But I certainly don't want to do that everywhere. I, I don't think that a solid gray log, although mine do have a lot of gray tones to them, and I'll pull those up in a minute. I dip in there and get some of that texture and hit it down on these. Now, part of what's going to happen is it's going to gray itself out. My paints were not entirely dry, so where I've got darker colors, it's going to blend with the white that I'm putting on top of it, and it's going to get a little bit grayer. And then some where it's a little heavier is going to stay more in that white. So I'm just going to keep splatting this on here. You can see I don't, I, I'm all over the place. I feel like there are times where it'll grow heavier in a spot. And don't worry, when it dries, it starts, it starts to get, don't, don't freak out about it looking too splotchy while it's wet because as it dries and those paints really um, kind of blend themselves together, you'll get a different feel from it. You'll get a different texture because it's going to start being powdery. I do have a lot of strings down here on this end that I should have taken care of. So I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to stop for a moment so I can get some of these strings before they make me crazy. So I went ahead and pulled this one up so you could see what I mean about um, adding some of the ashier gray to it. You can see this is certainly a lot browner. This is the back side. It doesn't have any of my white added yet. But if you're wanting more depth, and you can see I've got the gray, either you can wipe it in or just come in with your white pasty part. This is how I ended up with so much gray in there um, when I first poured it. So this will give it some of those gray tones. I could very well leave it in the more brown range, but I did like that I have actual wood in my fireplace right now. Um, and it has kind of the gray tones with a little bit of the reddish browns underneath. And if you've got a spot where you worry that you got too much of the wrong color or not enough of a color, go in and give it time to dry. You can steadily layer over this. And you can see now as this starts to dry in some of these sections, the faster it dries, it'll leave kind of that hint of gray bark color. And I'm just trying to drag some of it down in there so that it's not all fully on the surface. Um, if that makes sense. Like it's not all sitting on your, your texture there on your hot glue. Some of it's down into the, um, the deeper portions. Now, as far as this goes, I'm getting to a color range that I think I can be pretty happy with personally. I will come in and add a little more. Let me switch these around. You can see that this one is cut out here. I painted the inside black. Um, I'll end up painting that as well. That way it's just not noticeable. 
I doubt it would be by the time it's got fluffy trees around it. So here is the point where I came in. Anything I didn't like, I just started dabbing all my paints together. Don't go too crazy or you'll lose the different color tones and you'll end up with one... Um, you're going to end up with a taupey gray. If you mix all these colors together, for the most part, you're going to end up with like a taupey gray color between the browns, the black, and everything else. In case you ever wanted to know how to make a taupey gray. And this is essentially what I did. I kept jabbing this on, giving more and more texture making sure that there were more and more little speckles of um, color down in the lower spots and the higher spots, particularly the darker colors down in the lower spots. I have really done a number on this sad little brush. I'm going to try to swoop it back up. This is why my hands look terrible all the time. I refuse to wear gloves. I enjoy the messy part of the messy part. So I'm digging into more of this white. I can come over here. Now's a good time. If you've got any leftover paint that needs to be used that you don't want to feel bad because you over poured, it's not going to hurt to have more color and more depth on here. Just be careful, you can go overboard and end up with a solid color mess. So this is what I was saying, you can take some spots where you might have a little more white overgrowth. I've got a couple of pieces in my fireplace that look very similar to that. And they're real. The cool thing is, is the reason I didn't want to cover this too awful much is now you've got that real wood. Um, and you can see how well it blends in there. And it has some of the gray ashy to it. I do like the little bit of texture that the baking soda gives. It's not necessary though. It just gave a little texture to stick to those uh, the hot glue lines so that they were, I don't know, a little rougher. And you can see this is pretty much, I just kept doing it this way. I might leave some of this light, some of this dark because several pieces together, I think that gives more realism as far as uh, this has... A lot of lighter sections here right next to this knot hole you can kind of see so I think I'm going to leave that as it starts to dry and you finish out now's another opportunity if you've got any wet paint that you want to drag through and just kind of give some lines if you could see really really close if you've painted with me before you know that these can leave some lines behind so if there's like just a hair of wet paint in there. I'm dragging it down into there to give a little bit more. But there you go. You can kind of see those rough edges now just kind of look like bark sitting there. I cannot wait to use these to bulk up my artificial trees, my little wimpy artificial trees, and to be able to stack a little neater and less messy on my fireplace because every time one of those things sh sheds bark everywhere I've got a textured fireplace it is such a pain to clean all that mess up this one once it dries nothing's nothing is gonna actually shed off of it I have some other ideas for this I can't wait to keep playing with that idea uh hopefully you learned something gave you an idea of what colors might really work I'm gonna try this on Probably some wrapping paper ones using this very same kind of color scheme. Some um, toilet paper ones for like the little bitty Dollar Tree trees. I've got several ideas for these. I can't wait to play with it. Just thinking about it, you could probably cut a couple down. 
um, and put some tea lights in them, just the battery operated tea lights and make it really cute. I can't wait to play with this some more and hopefully show you some ideas down the road with what I have done with what I've started. Hope to talk to you guys soon. I have missed some of you crafty friends. I do what I do when I can do it. That's just kind of where I stand. I miss you guys. I miss being able to craft and do things. I wasn't even planning on doing this as a craft, but my kiddo asked me to help him put his costume together. And this worked out way better than I had anticipated. And I wanted to share as I did something with the scrap piece. Talk to you guys.